Picture yourself floating in the endless expanse of space. There are no edges or corners, no up or down, left or right. It's like being lost in a galactic wilderness, except you can't rely on any natural reference points or even on your usual sense of direction to guide you. And without gravity, you can find yourself tumbling and spinning in all directions, like being caught in a celestial tumble dryer. So what do you do? How do you know which way to go and how not to get lost? Well, this isn't a simple question. First, let's take a trip back to good old planet Earth, where a direction is something we often take for granted. Imagine you're hiking through a dense forest. You're surrounded by towering trees, mossy rocks, and chirping birds. But there are no clear paths or road signs to guide you. So what should you do? The first thing that comes to mind is a compass, right? A small magical device that always knows where the north is, no matter where you are on the planet. All thanks to a tiny magnet inside. It feels the pull of Earth's magnetic field, which covers our planet like a cozy blanket. And this field is pulling the arrow towards the planet's North Pole. Now, when you know where the North is, you can determine East, West, and South. At this point, you can navigate through the wilderness like a seasoned explorer. This is what we call a reference point. And it's not just about finding your way through the forest. Think about how you use reference points in your daily life. Giving and following directions on a map, using a GPS navigation system, or even just telling someone which way to turn at the street corner. Even in the skies we have them, using the water. Let's say you're embarking on a thrilling hot air balloon adventure. As soon as you rise into the sky, you're greeted by breathtaking views of rolling landscapes and glittering oceans. But how do you know how high you are? That's where sea level comes into play. You've probably heard phrases like above sea level or below sea level in your daily life. It's the average level of the world's oceans, a universal reference that acts as the starting point for measuring heights and depths. As you ascend in your hot air balloon, you can use instruments like altimeters to measure your altitude relative to sea level. It's like a ruler that tells you how far you've climbed into the sky. And it's not just for hot air balloon adventures. Altitude relative to sea level is used in various ways, from aviation to meteorology and to geography. It helps us understand and describe the height of mountains and the depths of oceans, the elevation of cities, and even the flight paths of airplanes. We're used to having points of reference on Earth, but when we go higher, things are getting much more complicated. In space, there are no natural landmarks, no compasses, and no universal altimeters. Without any fixed points of reference, determining direction becomes a real challenge. Even the stars, which are often used for navigation on Earth, can be misleading in space. On Earth, stars appear to move in a fixed pattern due to the rotation of our planet. But in space, they seem to shift and change position as you travel. So, what do we do? Well, we need some advanced technology and precise calculations. Our intrepid spacecraft have clever ways to navigate the galaxy seas. One of the most amazing tools spacecraft use for navigation is star trackers. It's like a cosmic GPS. They're the cameras that scan the night sky, capturing images of stars and using them as reference points. Just like we use street signs to find our way in a new city, Spacecraft use the position of stars to determine their orientation and direction in space. Spacecraft can also use other celestial objects as navigation aids. For example, they might use planets, moons, or even asteroids to determine their position and direction. They create their own course based on these celestial bodies. For example, a course to fly from Mercury to Mars through Venus. It's like playing cosmic connect the dots with planets and moons. But it's not just about finding their way. Spacecraft also use these navigation methods to make precise maneuvers, like entering orbit around a planet or landing on a moon. They use complex calculations and precise measurements to determine their altitude, speed, and trajectory, using the positions of celestial objects as a compass. 
It's like a dance, where the spacecraft follows the cues to execute intricate maneuvers in the vastness of space. Another clever gadget is the gyroscope. It's like a space compass. Gyroscopes are incredibly sensitive and can detect even the slightest changes in orientation. They help spacecraft to stay stable, keeping them on the right track. Spacecraft also use cameras and lasers to capture images and measure distances to nearby objects, such as planets, moons, or asteroids. And don't forget about all the fancy software and algorithms. Inside each spacecraft, there's a genius computer brain that solves complex equations and makes decisions where to fly next. But that's us talking about directions. Now, what about the altitude? In space, altitude takes on a whole new meaning. It's like trying to measure the height of a skyscraper with no ground floor. So this cosmic conundrum requires some out-of-this-world creativity. Usually, it's measured relative to the position of a spacecraft or satellite. If you're floating near a moon or some other celestial body and you want to know how high or low you are, you could measure your distance from this body's surface. For example, astronauts on the International Space Station might refer to their altitude as the distance above the Earth's surface, even though they're far within our atmosphere. And if the celestial body doesn't have a solid surface, like Jupiter, which is basically a huge ball of gas? Oh well, then we just have to pray. Another method is to measure altitude relative to the spacecraft's orbit. You could measure your distance from your orbit center or plane and use that as a reference point. These methods might sound complex, but they're the easiest way to navigate and operate in space. They allow spacecraft to precisely control their altitude, speed, and trajectory. With these methods, they can even perform maneuvers like docking, landing, or rendezvousing. Space agencies and missions also act like interstellar traffic controllers. They have to ensure that spacecraft from different nations and organizations don't crash into each other. To keep things organized, they use standardized systems and conventions, just like how we use road signs and traffic rules on Earth. In addition to standardized systems, space agencies and missions also use conventions for specifying direction and orientation in space. For example, the right hand rule. It's like a secret handshake for understanding the direction of things in physics and engineering. Imagine you have a magical glove that can tell you which way things will go in certain situations. Let's say this glove is on your right hand. Now, stick out your thumb just like you're giving a thumbs up. Your thumb represents the direction of the force or the push or pull of something. Next, curl your fingers around your thumb as if you're making a fist. Your fingers now represent the direction of a magnetic field or the rotation of something. Awesome! And now, for the grand finale. Point your index finger straight out like you're pretending to shoot a laser beam. Your index finger now represents the direction of motion or current flow. And there you have it. The right hand rule is all about using your magical glove to connect the direction of force, thumb, magnetic field or rotation, fingers, and motion or current flow, index finger. It's a fun and handy trick that helps to solve complex problems in physics and engineering, including navigation. Space exploration is an adventure that challenges our perception of direction and orientation, making us realize just how much we rely on our home planet. Who knows what other crazy ways await us in the future? For example, quantum navigation, or when we'll create warp speeds like in Star Trek. Methods that would be not only practical, but also awe-inspiring. Let's wait and see. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.